Good morning grade 5, this is Ms. Sara Nofil and this lesson is a literacy lesson in which we will be uh, discussing legends. The objectives of the lesson are what are legends and we're going to be reading this part from the booklet, characteristics and features of legends, reading a legend and analyzing it, and answering activities in our Hodder books. So I want you to pause the video, get your booklet and your Hodder book and put them beside you in order to start the lesson. Now that you have your booklet with you, I want you to turn to page four. Legends are traditional stories or group of stories told about a particular person or place. Uh, formerly, the term legend meant a tale about a saint, and legends resemble folk tales in content. Uh, they may include supernatural beings, uh, elements of mythology, or explanations of natural uh, phenomena, but they are associated with a particular locality, which is a place or person, and are told as a matter of history. So most legends are historical, they are very old, and they carry an element of truth because the places and uh, persons uh, or people sorry uh, are real so what are the characteristics and features of legends legends include good and evil characters they have uh, heroes kings and villains they used to be passed on orally rather than written uh, they will they were told um, stories that are told not written but then uh, they wrote them down uh, they may be p based on uh, an element of truth as we said before because uh, the people and uh, places mentioned are real uh, it usually has an ending that summarizes the outcome usually refers to individual characters and they are often about a famous person place or character or creature sorry now, these are some examples of uh, legends. Uh, the legend of King Arthur. We have, of course, the famous Beowulf. Uh, the legend of Sleepy Hollow. And the legend of La Llorona, which is a Spanish legend. And, of course, the famous legend of uh, Robin Hood, which we will be analyzing and reading uh, today. Now, I want you to turn uh, to page 78 in your Hodder books. Uh, let's take a look at the helpful hints again. A legend is a story which has been passed on through many generations. It usually involves a heroic person, which is very important. Uh, it is thought that there is some truth in legends. Because, again, these people uh, have lived... Uh, on earth before uh, before we start reading uh, let's uh, take a look at who is Robin Hood Robin Hood was a legendary figure who lived in England about 700 years ago and he was an outlaw which means he broke the rules he was a thief who stole money from the rich and gave it to the poor uh, he lived with a gang a group of thieves known as the Merry Men. Merry means happy. Uh, in Sherwood Forest, near Nottingham. Uh, in some pictures, he is shown as having red hair and wearing a green outfit. Now, I want you to pause the video, read this extract from the legend of Robin Hood, uh, which is uh, the beginning of our story, uh, and then continue the video again. Now that you have read, let's take a look at the opening paragraph. By the way, this extract is the beginning of uh, the story. We, ha we still have another extract for the middle and another one for uh, the end. So in this uh, beginning, uh, we're going to take a look at the opening paragraph. This is the first paragraph and it's called the opening paragraph. Uh, we're going to see how the writer starts his paragraph. He says here, the Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh, so he starts with characters. Uh, he mentions the first and main character. 
although Robin Hood is uh, the main character this is the legend of robin hood but in this particular extract the sheriff of nottingham is the highlight uh, because uh, he then introduces his conflict and the sheriff's conflict the sheriff's problem is that robin hood always escapes from him um because Robin Hood is a thief, the sheriff, of course, wants to capture him, to imprison him. Uh, but the problem is that Robin Hood always manage, uh, manages to escape. So, here we have the conflict, we have the characters, and we have what is happening in the story. Uh, of course, the conflict is very important and it's usually stated at the beginning uh, because the whole plot revolves around this um, conflict or this issue. Uh, next, I want you to take a look at how we structure paragraphs. It's very clear how the paragraph starts and ends, have spaces between paragraphs. Uh, so please make sure that you are, uh, your story is organized uh, in this way. Uh, and of course, we know that uh, one of the uh, one of the reasons to start a new paragraph is a change of time, and here time is signified by uh, adverbs. We also change uh, or start a new paragraph whenever we have a change of place. Uh, speakers, change of speakers as well, even change of idea. Another thing I want you to take a look at is the usage of adjectives. The writer uses a lot of adjectives in order to describe uh, the events, describe the characters. Um, we also have a usage of comparative and superlative here. All of these are adjectives and adjectives are very important whenever you're writing uh, fiction uh, stories. Another uh, thing is adverbs. Here we have surely, finally, now. <clears throat> All of these adverbs also add to the descriptions. The last thing I want you to take a look at is <clears throat> some things uh, when we write, uh, we usually uh, give explicit information about characters or events and we also give implicit information what's the meaning of implicit information implicit information is um, showing the writer something and um, showing the reader sorry something and allowing him to understand uh, from this event so for example we are um, in this uh, second paragraph here uh, the writer doesn't tell us the characteristics of Robin Hood which are that he is brave and kind uh, he rather shows us how he is brave and kind um, this part tells us about Robin Hood's character, but in an indirect or an implicit way. Uh, as I told you, he didn't state that he is a brave character. He showed us how he is brave and fearless by stealing from the rich. And he also showed us that he is kind uh, because he gives the money to the poor. So these are two qualities that the reader understands from the text. Implicit um, implicit methods or indirect methods are very important, uh, as well as uh, the uh, explicit. Now, I want you to go to the first activity here. It's very easy. Uh, you will have to scan the text, the extract that we just read, and give a word which has the root uh, word guard there are three words which have uh, the root word guard in them. Uh, and then you're going to match them to each of these definitions. Uh, so I want you to pause the video and then uh, solve it and play the video again. Now that you have answered, these are the answers. Please check them. Now moving on to activity two. We have the word guard 
It can be used as a noun or a verb. Uh, we're going to complete the table below to show how it has been used in this in these sentences and tick the correct box. So sentence uh, the first sentence he was sent to guard the prisoner. So the word guard here is a verb or a noun. You will have to decide this. Uh, so pause the video, uh, solve this activity and play the video again. Okay, now that you have solved it, first sentence, we the word guard is a verb. The second sentence, the word guard here is a noun, of course, because it's uh, the guard. And uh, the guard is the subject of the sentence, followed by the verb was looking. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do is to answer this question here. What makes Robin Hood a legendary figure? So I want you to pause the video. And put in mind all the characteristics and features of legends in your mind to answer this question. And then play the video again, please. Okay, so Robin Hood was a hero. And remember, heroic it includes heroic characters. So he is a hero. Um... Many people saw him as a hero, especially the poor people. Uh, he is a hero to many people as he stole from the rich and uh, gave uh, to the poor. Now, uh, I want you to turn to page 79. We're going to read the extract of the middle of the story. This is the middle of our story uh, in which uh, we... Um, get to know more about the plot so i want you to uh, take a look at uh, or read the extract and then play the video again now that you have read this extract the middle of our story uh, one thing i want you to use when you are writing legends is idiomatic phrases we need to use idioms. This is one of the features as well. Uh, so, what is an idiomatic play, uh, 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 phrase? Sometimes writers use words to make a point more strongly. The words do not mean exactly what they say. This is called an idiomatic phrase. So, idioms again. Uh, I want you to read the first paragraph here and point out the usage of idioms. Uh, pause scan and continue the video again okay idiomatic phrase here is walking into the lion's den which means um, putting yourself in danger or putting yourself in a trap okay another thing I want you to take a look at is um, the usage of speech it's very important to use speech in our writing however the writer he is, here does something uh, that we shouldn't do, which is that he put two speakers in the same paragraph. Please remember, we change a paragraph with a change of speakers. So, don't do this. He includes two speakers in one paragraph. Please don't do this. Whenever we have another speaker, cut uh, the paragraph and uh, start a new paragraph. Uh, so let's go to the activities we're going to uh, read again the extract above uh, and we're going to match these idioms to their meaning uh, so even if you don't know try to guess pause the video solve the activity and then check your answers now that you have answered let's check the answers part of the furniture means always there Deep pockets but short hands means never pay for anything. Raining cats and dogs means really heavy downpour, raining. Uh, recharge your battery means get your energy back. And tackle an issue means solve a problem. Idioms are very important, so please make sure you include idioms when you're writing legends. Uh, another thing I want you to take a look at here is a spelling rule. The spelling rule of IE, the rule of IE. Uh, so, what is the rule of IE? 
I before E except after C. I always comes before E except after C. Uh, but this rules applies especially with the C uh, with the sound when the sound is a long E. So for example, let's take the word receive. Receive, we have C and then EI, not IE, because it's after C and uh, the sound is a long E. Uh, it could be a little bit confusing, um, but I want you to read it again and it will uh, become easy. Uh, so let's go to activity two here. He says, choose which of these spellings in the words below follow the ie rule and which do not uh, so you're going to make a list of the words that follow the ie rule and uh, the words that don't follow the ie rule so let's again ie rule says that the i should come before the e so it should be i e except after c so if it comes after c you have to re uh, reverse them they will become c e i uh, this only happens when we have uh, the sound uh, of a long E. So pause the video, solve the activity, activity 2, and um, play the video again in order to uh, check your answers. Okay, the answers are the words which follow the IE rule are chief, and we have in, uh, here a uh, receipt. Uh, so receipt, we have the C, and then uh, E I, not I E. We also have the word ceiling, C, and then E I again. Uh, and uh, words that do not follow the rule are weird and C's because they have E I, not I E, and we don't have a C. So here uh, in the word C's, we also have E I, not I E. Um, and that is the IE rule. Okay, now we uh, have reached the ending of our story. And what's uh, very important about the ending is um, that they, they have many different, uh, there are many different ways to write an ending. And they all need to refer back to the conflict because uh, you can either resolve the conflict and if we resolved our conflict here, uh, Robin Hood would be captured, or the writer can uh, not resolve the, uh, the conflict uh, by making uh, Robin Hood not captured, uh, or there is a different ending, which is a cliffhanger. Uh, we don't really have an ending. It stops uh, somewhere um, which is very intriguing, and it doesn't solve or resolve uh, the uh, issue or uh, conflict. Uh, so let's uh, pause the video, read the ending of the story, and then uh, continue the video again. Now that you have read, uh, so let's see how the writer ends his story. He ends it with Robin Hood has escaped again, which is not resolving the uh, sheriff's conflict. And making our hero uh, escape from the villain. Okay, uh, now can you find an idiom in this extract? Pause the video, search for an idiom, and then play the video again to know the answer. The idiom is the prize is in the bag. Because it doesn't really mean that the prize is in the bag. Uh, actually, if you say that something is in the bag, you mean that you are certain that you will get it or achieve it. Uh, for example, I'll win the competition. He assured me it's in the bag. You cannot put a competition in the bag, but this is an expression that says I will win. I am sure that I will uh, get the first place or win the competition. So, uh, use idioms in your writing. Uh, the last thing we're going to discuss is um, a legend in a poem. Uh, if we have a legend in a poem, it's usually called a ballad. So, a ballad is um, 
writing the story of a legend in the form of a poem. Uh, I want you to pause uh, this vid uh, the video and then read this poem and complete the video again. So, um, after reading the poem, we're going to find words that the writer has used to show how he felt about Robin Hood. Uh, for example, he sees Robin as a valiant, brave character. So, uh, scan the video, uh, underline or highlight the parts that tells us what the writer felt about Robin Hood. Pause the video, do the activity, and then play the video again. Okay, now that you have underlined, let's check. In the part where he says valiant, brave, and good, this is how he sees Robin Hood. Also, the fearless blade. And he spoke his name with pride, so the writer views him as a brave, fearless, and proud character. Okay, now... Uh, I want you to make a list of the things that we know about Robin Hood so far from the poem and from uh, the extracts that we've read. Uh, make a list of the things that we know about him. And I want you to do this with uh, while using evidence from the original text. So I want you to include uh, words from the two texts uh, in your evidence. Pause the video, finish the activity, and uh, play the video again to check. Okay, now, here uh, is a list of the things we know about him. He lived in days of old. He robbed the rich to feed the poor. He was valiant, brave, and good. Uh, he was good at hiding. Uh, he was a lovely, uh, or he had a lovely maid. Uh, he traveled with a band of merry men. And uh, people uh, from all around spoke about him with pride. Uh, now take a look at the red parts here. These are put between two single quotation marks. You can also use uh, double quotation marks. Uh, because these are parts from the original text. So here we have valiant, brave and good. It's exactly as it is written from the text. So that's why we put... Quotation marks to tell the reader that uh, to tell the reader that these are not my own words. These are the words from the original texts or the words of someone else. Uh, and uh, one thing to do this um, is to put either a single quotation mark or double quotation mark. But please make sure that you copy exactly um, the same letters and punctuation as in the text. So here we have valiant, comma, brave and good. We also wrote it here, valiant, comma, brave and good. Um, it has to be exactly like it's written in the text. Otherwise, just paraphrase and don't quote. Um, here we have uh, also paraphrased things like he robbed the rich to feed the poor. He didn't say these words exactly, but he said uh, a similar meaning to it or the same even meaning, uh, but using different words. This is what we call paraphrasing. Uh, he also here says he was good at hiding. This is not stated clearly this is an implicit this is what we understand from the text that he is good at hiding um, so whenever you provide evidence to your answers please either paraphrase you can paraphrase or if you're going to use the same exact words of uh, the text please put them between inverted commas or single quotation marks uh, Okay, last thing, here we have some information about the story. So we're going to decide whether they are from the story or from the poem. So I want you to go over these information and uh, check from the poem and the story and then continue the video again. Now that you have uh, finished activity, let's check. The first information we got from the story second information from the poem, third from the story, the fourth one is also from the story. So, 
Now that we've finished legends, please revise the characteristics of legends and put in mind all the elements that compose a legend, uh, like idiomatic phrases, adjectives, speech, uh, organizing into paragraphs. These are very important in writing a legend. And again, legends are uh, particularly about places, specific people, or creatures. Thank you and stay safe and positive.